Welcome to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. And my guest today is Kim Landry. Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Fran. I'm delighted to be here. You know, it's, it's so exciting. You have been in the business community for a number of years um, with your own business, but also interacting and influencing the growth of businesses in the main line in Philadelphia area. Um, tell me a little bit about you and why you're significant. <laughs> wow, that's an open-ended question. It is. Uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel personally significant because I'm one of only 7% of women-owned businesses that ever hit the million-dollar sales mark. Mm -hmm. um, fully 80% of women-owned businesses are solopreneurs. And that was never what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to have a company. I'm very much a people person. I love having colleagues and uh, working as part of a team. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, something that's just made it very fulfilling for me personally to have this business. And then in terms of the larger community, I feel as I get older that I have more to offer as a mentor mm -hmm. to um, not only women, but anyone who's starting out in business and looking for some advice, some pointers, some mistakes I've made that maybe I can help them not make. So I've gotten involved with various uh, business-oriented organizations over the years, and for the past few years have been on the Mainline Chamber Board. Oh, so right. I'm putting a lot of focus into that. I'm now right. the vice chair of the board, and uh, I really believe in what the Chamber's trying to do around talent, education, and leadership. Mm -hmm. Talent, education, and leadership. It's almost tell. I wonder if there's another <laughs> L. <laughs> Talent, That's education, a good idea. leadership, no one's ever brought and, that up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Listen, learn, <laughs> leverage, <laughs> leverage, that leverage. Would be a good one. <laughs> leverage. Yeah. So, thinking of that, tell me, tell me about a significant story. I love the the fact that you're part of the seven percent. Um, but you know, in developing your business and um, helping others launch their business mm -hmm. through the work that you do. What's a significant story that you often find yourself looking back on or use to motivate others mm -hmm. as they go through the entrepreneurial journey? So there have really been um, two seminal events in the, the history of my business, which I started in 1990 by myself. Uh, mm. So for the first three years, I was essentially a freelancer, mm -hmm. uh, incorporated freelancer. The, the most significant event in that, those early years was hiring my first employee. You have to take a right, really yeah. deep breath when you do that. And it's sort of burned in my brain. It was a summer night. I was sitting out on my front porch <laughs> with my husband, who um, six years later became a partner in my business, mm -hmm. talking about the significance of hiring someone. What would it mean? Can I really do this? There's a lot of doubts. Um, and I was a mother and uh, I had l little kids, but this was the juncture where my youngest was in kindergarten. And mm. it was sort of the launching point that I had looked to for those years when I was working part time and uh, being a mom. Mm. So I was there and it was time and I had to hire someone and mm -hmm. I had a great candidate. And so it was like, am I gonna bite the bullet? I'm gonna really do this. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I did that is the reason that the business succeeded because wow. she was an awesome counterpoint to me, mm -hmm. both in terms of skills and um, temperament and outlook. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's still with me 25 years later. Wow, so, um, that's excellent. Yeah, that's excellent. so that was that's a powerful. big one. Okay. And the other one was in 2008 mm -hmm. when we lost our biggest client. Mm. We had, um, I won't say it's through no fault of our own because certainly I was blind to how quickly this could happen. Mm. But this client represented 50% of our business and had for years. Mm -hmm. And the more I brought in new business outside, the more business they threw me from inside. Wow. So at, it was the Philadelphia Inquirer, mm -hmm. and they went bankrupt mm -hmm. in 2008, and overnight we lost 50% of our revenue. Wow. 
So whether we were going to survive that, it was again one of those uh, summer front porch conversations <laughs> with my husband. But oh, by really? this time, he was as embedded in the business as I was. It was mm -hmm. as significant to him as it was to me. Mm -hmm. um, and we considered everything from shutting down and getting jobs to going into a consulting business with just the two of us. Mm -hmm. But really, the, um, the love of that business that we just every day wanted to go to and mm -hmm. the people that we had brought along uh, drove us to decide, no, we're going we're gonna to rebrand, we're going to start over, we're going to focus outside of the newspaper industry, and mm -hmm. we're going to survive this. And uh, we survived. We barely survived, but we survived the recession. We mm -hmm. never missed a payment to our employees, missed quite a few to ourselves. Okay. But um, okay. we did what it, what it took mm -hmm. to be where we are today. Absolutely. Two very significant stories. Take a moment, um, because I'm sure folks are listening, and now they know a little bit about Kim. Tell us where you are now with Hollister Creative. What are you? What do you do? Why does it matter to your mm -hmm. clients? So we are an integrated marketing communications company. Mm -hmm. And if you are a business owner and you are not meeting your marketing goals, mm -hmm. you either lack critical skill sets or you lack capacity, or both. Mm -hmm. Often it's both. Mm -hmm. And we come in and assess your needs and we create an action plan that is practical and sensible for you. And then we act on it. We take marketing off your to-do list and we get it done for you. Right, and I've seen that happen actually with a number of your clients, which is <laughs> totally cool. Totally cool. Yeah. What do people say after they work with you? What do they love um, working? I think uh, they, they love that we are so proactive. Mm -hmm. um, I, I call it persistent. We call them, we email them, we try to keep them on track mm -hmm. because they're involved. Mm -hmm. It's not like we can just go off and do our own thing without mm -hmm. their involvement. It's very much mm -hmm. a collaboration. Mm -hmm. So I think they appreciate that it's a collaboration, but they also appreciate how hard we work to keep them involved uh, yes. in the picture as we go yes. along. And they appreciate that we're reporting results to them, mm -hmm. so they know what they're paying for and what they're getting out of it. Um, and they appreciate that they're, that they're seeing results, of course, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. the whole point. Yeah, which sort of leads me to my next question. Um, the tagline that I always like to work with is significant, and you shared two significant stories. Business, I like to know, you know, why do people get into business? What is their business? How are they adding value? Mm -hmm. And then the last word that to me is really key is results. So mm -hmm. Kim, share with me some results that you're really proud of and, and why, whether they're personal or professional, because I think that's important to kind of keep in the ecosystem, particularly as so, a mentor. Um, personal results is I have two adult children <laughs> who are uh, real adults and have lived on their own completely since college mm -hmm. and have careers and passions in their lives that are not mine. They're not gonna mm -hmm. be taking over my business. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Professionally, I'm proud to have been in business for 25 years. Mm. Um, I'm proud to have been accepted last year at this time into the Goldman Sachs 10,000 mm. Small Businesses mm -hmm. Program, which mm -hmm. gave me an awesome opportunity to really step back from the business mm -hmm. and evaluate what would I do differently if I were starting this business today, right. which was fabulous. Mm -hmm. I really reinvented the business again, mm -hmm. not as significantly as I did in 2008, but at least 50% as significantly. Right. And um, I think that the, the willingness to keep learning and keep challenging yourself with ideas from people outside your business has been key all along. Mm -hmm. I've almost always had um, coaches, mentors, been involved in programs, taking classes, workshops, etc. It keeps you on the cutting edge, which is very important in marketing. Look how much it's changed <laughs> right, in 25 right. years. Oh, it's wow. not even the same, same animal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm proud of that. I'm proud that we set a goal of 20% growth last year and we hit it. Whoa, was, congratulations. Thank you, wow. which was great. I'm um, proud that I just met with one of our, a client we've had for 
about three years, and at mm -hmm. the beginning, this client said, my goal is to go from 10 million to 14 million over the next three years, mm -hmm. and they hit 14 million Whoa. in 2015. Wow. So, so not you solely due to me or <laughs> no, my team, no, of course. But they, branding and marketing matters. It does. It does. It does. Wow. And the, the person there who coordinates us and who is our liaison to that company, mm -hmm. uh, when she gave me that great news, she also said, thank you for making me better. Mm. So I loved that. Value you know? add. I mean, it really wow. shows you how collaborative it yes. is because I think in the course of these three years, we have taught her a lot. She didn't mm -hmm. come in knowing all that much about marketing, but mm -hmm. I think now she knows a lot mm -hmm. and she's able to be a, an even better partner. Mm. Wow. Really, really powerful. Kim, it's been really fun um, talking with you. And as we wrap up, I just have, it's, it's another open-ended question, as I like to do, um, and it's something that as a coach, I often find myself saying to folks, focus your energy for action, mm -hmm. um, because it is easy as an entrepreneur to watch the latest shiny object. And so my question for you is, when you focus your energy for action, what happens in your world and what happens in our world? So really, how do you impact the people around you? Uh, I have a very highly developed capacity for focus. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes my husband thinks I'm ignoring him. It's really just that I'm <laughs> focused on something else. And uh, it it's actually gets out of control sometimes because mm -hmm. I get so focused on a task or a project mm -hmm. that everything else falls away. Mm -hmm. So I do have to have other people in my company who are regularly telling me, um, what about this, what about that? We have daily huddles where we talk about mm -hmm. where things are with projects, and mm -hmm. that's the point at which someone can say, I, I need to pull you off of that because <laughs> we really need to do this too. Okay. Um, I think that that is an executive skill that's super important, mm -hmm. but it, it just needs to be balanced. Mm -hmm. I, I can get anything done if I have the room to focus on it. Mm -hmm. And I think people get excited by how goal-driven I am mm -hmm. and they want to be part of it because they know we're going somewhere and right. this goal is toast because we're going to make it <laughs> because Kim's not going to rest until we do. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, Kim, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I want to make sure that I give you an opportunity to do what we often talk about in, in business and it's the 30 second or one minute pitch. Um, I think right now you've got about a minute. So <laughs> That's generous. Since you're, since you're on TV, and this will be kind of captured live and forever on YouTube, um, go ahead and share your one-minute introduction. Okay, so I think you already allowed me to do that earlier, um, but I'm going to expand on it a little bit. Great. We We work primarily with business owners, and for them, we're providing a proactive strategic partner to help them plan their marketing as well as execute it. I didn't mention that we also work with marketing directors. Mm -hmm. So when a company reaches a certain size, usually they will hire a marketing director. Very often, unless you're talking about a company with over 200 employees, it's a one-man show mm -hmm. or one-woman show. And that person becomes the strategic person in the relationship we may offer advice, support, sounding board, but what we're doing for marketing directors is the execution. Mm -hmm. We know, not only have a um, diverse and talented internal team, we have an alliance of other specialty marketing companies, whether it's social media or video or events or whatever it is that the company might need. Mm -hmm. This Marcom Alliance, uh, which I started with, a partner, Bill, right. Bill Haley at Allied Pixel, just recently helps us take the place of a much larger company mm -hmm. where you're bringing in this talent, owner-led small businesses that can focus together as a team on meeting the needs of a company that has larger needs than yeah. we could uh, take care of on our own. Well, Kim? I want to give you the official thank you. Um, you are my first guest, and I will be forever grateful. Oh, I am so um, honored, Fran. And <laughs> so just for the record, 
I have been interviewing, it's been my pleasure to interview Kim Landry, president of Hollister Creative. They can be found on the web at hollistercreative.com, and that's H-O-L-L-I-S-T-E-R creative.com. I'm Fran McNeil, host of Significant TV, where we focus on significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. Thank you for watching. Thank you.